feeling like a shark in a shrimp tank. Big fish, small pond in the shrimp tank. But it's a- Welcome back to another episode of The Shrimp Tank. We come to you virtually from Seattle, the entire Pacific Northwest, and the adopted part of the PNW, the Bay Area. Linda is going to love to know that we've adopted the Bay Area. Listen, if you want to learn how to start, grow, or run a successful business, this is the podcast for you. It's where we say street smarts and book smarts collide. Hello again, everyone. I'm Dan Whedon, and I'm joined by my co-host, Linda Popke, coming to us out Hi. of, uh, I would say, River City, but that's not right. It's in the Bay Area Redwood somewhere. Red, Redwood, Redwood City. City. Listen, yeah. our guest today is Stacy Lukensmeyer. Stacy knows the pain, the drive, the terror, and the rewards of being an entrepreneur. She has loved it and cursed it through six years, six of her own businesses. I think we can all relate. And she's worked with well over a thousand other entrepreneurs to help them survive the challenges of starting and running a company. Stacy is an EOS implementer by day, helping leadership teams get more of what they really want from their businesses. We're going to find out if they know what they want from their businesses. Stay tuned for that. And by night, with wild abandon and 100% commitment, she sleeps. I love that. <laughs> Stacy, welcome. Uh, we will be with you in just a minute. Everyone, you can find us wherever you get your podcasts. We're on iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher. YouTube. Linda, what are we? We are ubiquitous. We are. We come to you from about a dozen cities, including the mothership in Atlanta. Now, listen, before we bring on Stacy, Linda, you're coming off the disabled list. I haven't seen you in yeah. forever. Yes. Welcome back. Thank you. I'm doing so much better now. Now, yes. for all, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that cards and letters are, are streaming in. <laughs> what happened to Linda? Linda, you had a little knee surgery. Uh, tell us, first of all, how are you doing? Uh, how's the knee? And have you noticed any change in your life and routine at home since having knee surgery? Well, the knee is doing better. In fact, after this, I head off to, to physical therapy. So um, the good news is um, I'm now it's five weeks since the surgery. I can put both legs on the ground. I can walk a little bit without crutches. And pretty soon, I'm actually going to be able to drive. But um, it's amazing what you can't do when you have to hold yourself up with two crutches because you can't, you have no hands and you're hopping around on one foot. And um, I have, uh, I live in a two story house and I can tell you there are 14 steps from the first floor to the second floor. And I counted every single one um, every time I went up. And now I've stopped counting steps. I can actually go up by myself. I'm a big kid now. So. I'm well, you know, it is amazing. And we had Aaron Murphy on our show. I don't remember if if, if uh, you were the co-host on that. And you are. And Aaron talked about mobility issues as people age or become injured uh, like you right. are. It, cha- it, it changes everything about, you know, mobility and and uh, use around the house, doesn't it? It does. I mean, all of a sudden you understand, you know, what you can and can't do. And it's very different. Yep. Well, well, you know, Stacy Lukensmeyer is our guest today, and Stacy, I think, is is that I don't want to say she's not a crutch, but she does help CEOs maneuver uh, around some of the things that they're fourteen steps. I think as an EOS implementer, we're going to learn more about that. Stacy, welcome to the show, first of all, and uh, tell us. I, I've got to believe that you have worked at some points and maybe been one yourself a CEO that's often wondering, what the heck am I doing? I can't get around my own business. Yes, absolutely. Very well said, Dan and Linda. And congratulations on your good recovery and getting stronger. You know, um, very similar to entrepreneurship in that you are juggling 130 plus (laughs) different issues all at the same time, right? And you've got to come up with a solution for those challenges and keep all the plates spinning. Uh, And you have to take it one step at a time. And you have to distill down to the most simple, practical tool that you need to use right now to solve and address that issue. And that's what I do full time. But you do full time. So you talk about EOS. And that makes me think about iOS, which is on my my iPhone. But I suspect EOS is not something on my phone. So tell us about what EOS is. 
Right. EOS stands for the Entrepreneurial Operating System, and it is a very well-developed, very tested, tried and true, proven system of simple practical tools that when implemented in a business can help you, um, you know, harmonize and maximize the human energy that we all need to see to be successful with a company. So, you know, sort of like a business plan, I, I think people understand that there's policies and procedures and processes that should be done. However, and having and been being an entrepreneur myself, I think there are a lot of people who start businesses who have this dream, have this vision, have this product, have this service, and the process, <laughs> even though it's the right way, can get in the way and it's just not how they think. How often do you run into it where the CEO says, I just wanna do what I do. I just wanna build what I build. I wanna just go make money. Uh, this stuff is driving me crazy. Do you ever run into that? Almost exclusively, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, there's a, a certain nature in an individual that is an entrepreneur. And when uh, you know you're willing to take the risks, come up with the ideas, and start a company, most of the time that um, those propensities are at odds with let's create systems, let's create structure, let's create processes, and those are typically the words that make a true at the heart entrepreneur want to lay their head on the table and snore, right? <laughs> so uh, getting the company going, rolling, starting when it's exciting and ramping it up, the uh, visionary typically has a lot of energy and uh, enjoys those aspects of it. But at some point, at some point, you can't drive the business forward without additional tools. And so at that point, there's a little frustration. And where did they turn? What did they do next? Uh, typically, that's where an implementer needs to come in. So Stacey, so you've worked with a lot of entrepreneurs. You've had your own businesses. You've worked with entrepreneurs through this. What would you say is kind of the um, the most common situation that you run into obviously it's got to do with processes and implementation but where where is it that entrepreneurs tend to get stuck and is there anything you can tell us about how an entrepreneur can avoid getting stuck or is that something you just have to fight through yeah you know it's a little bit of both <laughs> uh we uh, one of our very first concepts that we talk about when we begin working with a new client is the concept of hitting the ceiling so any business, you know, you're moving along, you're growing, things are working well, and then all of a sudden er, you're hitting a ceiling and you're going to hit that ceiling in one of three different ways. You can hit that ceiling at an individual level. Um, you can hit that ceiling at a department level and you can hit the ceiling at an organizational level too. So at any given moment, there's probably somebody in your company that's hitting a ceiling, their department or the whole company. And the how you address and break through that is really going to determine how well you do it the next time and the next time and the next time because breaking through that once is just the beginning right it there will be another ceiling that keeps coming at you so some of the early ones often for the ceo or the owner of the company you feel like maybe you're losing a little control you don't know what all the parts and pieces that are happening and there's stuff going on in your company you're not fully aware of. And that can be really disconcerting for someone who created this from the ground up. So there can be a sense of panic that goes with that. Um, often grasping at what we call grabbing the vine, holding on to all the vines, trying to get control. When in reality, what you really need to do is learn to replicate yourself in the business, begin to let go of some of those vines and start to trust a growth process. That means you no longer have to hold on to every little piece. You start to bring in the people who know more than you do. And it's a complete shift at that point to where you're going to grow. So St Stacy, it feels to me like there's probably a floor at where you start working with people. So, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a solo practitioner. Linda's a solo practitioner. We don't have employees. Uh, we, we truly actually don't have a ton of moving parts, although sometimes it probably feels like it. 
but I got to believe that you are starting to deal with people who have now grown past that or are growing into a situation where maybe they're hitting, you know, million dollars in revenue. Maybe they're starting to get 10, 12 employees. Uh, they're actually getting departments, you know, things like that. Where is kind of that base size level where, okay, bringing in somebody like you starts to make sense? Right. Great question. Um, you know, we typically prefer to work with companies that are between 10 to 250 employees, okay. not because smaller than 10 can't benefit from the tools, but, you know, much smaller than 10, like a solopreneur, you know, your things function differently and you probably have a little more capacity to um, learn those tools and implement those on your own. And that's encouraged. I do talks uh, and workshops share, sharing some of those tools for people who want to self-implement. But when you've got 10 or more employees, you have a lot happening. And becoming an expert in EOS is probably not something you want to add to your plate. So it's the ideal time to bring in an implementer who knows exactly what they're doing and is experienced in helping facilitate the conversations that need to happen with the leadership team, uh, educate, train you on those tools, help you decide when to implement what, at what steps, and how to execute on that. It's much easier at that point to bring in that expertise. So quick question be before we go to break. So do you find that you kind of have I guess I call it a repeat offender, you know, where you've worked with someone, you've kind of got them set up, they go to the next company, and they go, oops, I'm doing the same thing again. Is this kind of a habit or, or once I've been trained in EOS, am I more likely to be able to do it on my own the next time? Uh, it really depends. Um, you know, the, the visionary, the person who's not really in love with structure and systems, uh, it's going to be always more challenging for them to maintain uh, the tools if they don't have a counterbalance within any company that they have a run. So we call this a visionary and an integrator, a VI duo, if you will. The integrator is going to be that person that's more process oriented. And so, you know, an imp a full implementation takes on average about two years for a company. And through that time frame, we want to work towards having a visionary and an integrator so that that balance between the two and the positive tension between the two will really help maintain all the work that they just did to make sure EOS was is the lifeblood and throughout the entire company. So there's EOS and then there's Stacy. You you know we heard in your bio you've you've had six businesses of your own and and we could maybe talk about that uh, uh, during the podcast about size and and all of that how big they've been and and all that. But I've got to believe that you've got stories to bring to your CEO clients. You got stories to bring to the table and to share uh, maybe of some of your own uh, failures and, and uh, resilience and all of that. How has your experience as a business owner, as an entrepreneur helped you in what you're doing today and how does it help your clients? It's pretty key, you know, um, being an entrepreneur can be a really long world. Uh, and, the complexity that you're handling on a day-to-day -day basis, being vulnerable enough to talk to somebody about the realities that you're facing, it's probably the last thing that any great entrepreneur wants to do, but it's one of the most important things. And to know that you're talking to somebody who's been there, who's uh, had those really difficult experiences, who gets it just changes the nature of the conversation, the willingness to be open. Um, I'm pretty proud of the things that I have screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> I like, and I I like also, that. <laughs> yeah. I also highly recommend learning from other people's mistakes so you don't have to make your own, which means we all need, uh, as, if you're an entrepreneur, you really need a group of people around you who've been there and done that. And it's an honor for me to be a part of that group around somebody. I, 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 Linda, I think I'm going to steal that from Stacey. I'm going to use that. I'm pretty proud of the mistakes I've made. I, I like that very much. Uh, I also like that we've got to pay the bills and we're going to hear from, uh, we're going to take a short break to hear from today's spotlight sponsor. And when we come back with our guest, 
Stacey Lukensmeyer for a Hot or Not section of the show. We're going to talk about business plans, uh, but maybe in a little bit of a different light. Don't walk away. We will be right back with more of the Shrimp Tank. Does this sound like you? I'd love to write a book, but I just don't have the time. In fact, I'm not even sure where to start. Maybe you have a compelling story to share or valuable advice for clients and prospects. If only you could get that story out of your head and into a published format. Think you don't have time to write a book? Think you aren't a good enough writer to get your message across? Think this sounds all too overwhelming? Well, think again. At Leverage to Market Associates, we help aspiring authors transform that long stuck book idea into an attractive published work. If you've written most of your book, we can help edit your work and drive it through the production process. If you're not sure where to start, we'll coach you through the creative process to organize your thoughts and create a compelling book outline. And if you're just not comfortable writing a book yourself, we can ghostwrite it for you. Contact Leverage to Market Associates for a complimentary evaluation of your nonfiction book concept today and bring your book to life. Okay, well, welcome back to The Shrimp Tank, where we interview the best and brightest CEOs and business thought leaders in the greater Puget Sound area and beyond. I'm Linda Popke, and our guest today is Stacy Lukensmeyer, and our next segment is Hot or Not. Well, Stacy, Linda, and I are going to pepper you with questions right now about different concepts, topics, a uh, whole bunch of different things, and we're going to find out if you think it's hot or not, and then why or why not. I'm afraid at the end you win absolutely nothing, but let's hope you have some fun with it anyway. I, I mentioned business plans, and inevitably business plans come up and are talked about, and we we talk about the importance of them. But what I find is a lot of times business plans are written when the business is starting and never looked at again for eternity after that. They're stuck somewhere. Some are even in things we call books and notebooks for, for all <laughs> I know. Uh, but is it hot or not to actually do some refreshers on that business plan? Hot, absolutely hot. You should be refreshing your business plan on a quarterly basis, to be honest. Oh, on a quarterly basis. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, look, talk about that a little bit. I've got to believe then that that becomes part, I think it must become part of your process uh, in working with CEOs. And if so, do they just say, I don't want to do this anymore? I guess they say, I just looked at this. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, you know, looking at it is not uh, the most important thing. Executing <laughs> on it is. And, you there know, you our, our entire universe actually functions on some really basic concepts. And as human beings, we tend to complexify everything, Right. So when you look at the world around us, it functions in 90 day cycles. We have four seasons through the year, right? As human beings, we also function on 90 day cycles. So when you think of um, people who start at the beginning of the year with a new workout routine, how long do they typically stick to that before they begin to fizzle out? Four Any days. ideas? Four days. Four days. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Dan, what do you think? Well, I, I, I... I'm going to guess that we're going into your uh, into your quarterly cycle, but I think it's usually within that first month they give up. Yeah. Yep. At 30, 60, 90 days, you yep. know, some people can push it closer to 90, but we see a lot of, of drop off that happens. Right. So, you know, when you look at your plan for the year for your company, you need to break it down next into what are we doing and focusing on over the next 90 days and who's responsible for exactly what elements in that time frame. And we work on this quarterly with all of our clients, their entire leadership team, so that everyone comes out of a quarterly session knowing what they're doing, why they're doing it, what the outcome is going to be, when they're going to have it done. And then they weekly have a meeting of accountability. We call it a level 10 meeting where they're reporting out on how this is going. That's great. That's great. So it's it's less of the, you know, write a plan and rewrite a plan. And it's more implement on a, on a regular cyclical basis. Great. Yes. So I'm going to ask you a different question. So I know until recently, you used to live in Wenatchee. Um, yes. Did I say that right? Yes. Okay. 
Um, and I love that area. I've been out to um, Icicle Creek and Sleeping Lady. So what's hotter, Eastern, Eastern um, Washington or Western Washington? <laughs> so I'm going to go with the literal and I'm going to tell you that Eastern Washington is hotter. Uh, you know. <laughs> okay. It's also very colder too, by the way. I don't know how yeah. you'll, you'll find that out as well. Yep. Yes. You know, we spent 30 years there, over 30 years in the Wenatchee Valley. Absolutely loved it. My husband's from that area. A great place to raise a family, great place to, to run uh, businesses from uh, and to grow them out from that area. Uh, the, the weather, though, is mm, a bit of a challenge. The sun and I don't particularly get along. So I am loving Western Washington and the weather here. Love the rain, love the water and the trees outside my window. And I am thoroughly impressed with the business community that we have here. The intelligence, the innovation that's happening here. Uh, Dan has been very helpful for me in introducing me to a lot of different people. And I feel like I've found uh, another good home. Good, well, we're, we're glad to have you here. Uh, I, I want to dig in. I'm going to pull out a hot or not for a second. You've, you've got six businesses. I don't know what they all have been. I'm, I'm curious, you know, how have they been the same? How have they been different? What industries have they been? Give us a little bit of an idea of the Stacy entrepreneur side. Right. Okay. So first I will preface this by telling you that, you know, when I graduated from college, I had a degree in education and I taught kindergarten. Oh, and so, you know, entrepreneurship was not my thing, not an interest. I'd never taken a single business class. I had no clue what I was doing when I started my first company. And, you know, EOS was, was uh, developed by a gentleman named Gino Wickman, who is an internally dry, driven by and created to be an entrepreneur. And I kind of had to become one out of what I call honest to goodness desperation. So my husband uh, has a long-term illness and he got very sick shortly after we got married. So um, I started my first business and had to figure it out little bits by little bits. Uh, I was pretty good at managing finances. And so I started a bookkeeping company because it was something that I knew I could do and that I could do well. Um, and I did. Uh, grew that uh, quite a bit, doubled revenue in that company for 10 years straight before I sold that, got the bug through that as well. And, you know, um, working with a, a bunch of different companies, I got to see things they were doing well and things that they weren't and decided at one point, you know, well, you know, I've got this great company going. I think I'm going to start another one. And and jumped to a completely different sector. I actually started a, a private preschool and selfishly motivated. You know, my my kids were getting older and I needed uh, I needed some place for them to be and go. So rather than pay for that service, I figured I'd just have people pay me. And <laughs> it worked well too. You know, these are not sexy. I'm innovating brand new things and bringing them to the marketplace companies. You know, this is main street kind of businesses. And uh, those first two were really, really good to me. Very good to me. Wow. I'm, I'm allowing you to pause because I can keep going and tell you about some more. I've owned a few different franchises. Absolutely recommend it highly. Um, I've expanded across the state. Uh, with um, 12 different locations. I love employees and building teams. Absolutely have loved it. Um, yeah, I'm more of a solopreneur now, but I still get that team fix because I'm working with other people's teams. And that is, uh, that's important to me. So I'm going to ask you a question because you're working with a lot of entrepreneurs and CEOs, small companies. It seems to me we hear a lot about these CEO peer groups, and there are various different kinds. There's Vistage, there's some others as well. Um, are they hot or are they a waste of time for CEOs and entrepreneurs? What do you think? Yeah, hot, absolutely hot. It's necessary. You know, uh, a CEO and, you know, many other leadership team level folks, if you're in the C-suite, you, you need a mastermind group. You need a uh, that support. Uh, you need the challenge that comes from them, the experience base that comes from them. I'm also a firm believer that you need uh, a, an executive coach as well. 
And, you know, the trifecta would be having that, uh, that group like Vistage or EO, um, having the coach and having an EOS implementer. When you have those three things, you pretty much have the circle around you that you need to run and scale a really great company. So let me make sure, because I, 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 I love your answer, and I think I'm starting to get a little bit of better understanding. You, you really, even though there's potential in air quotes, coaching you can do, you're not there to coach. You are there to make sure stuff gets done. You're, you're there to make sure, you know, in, in a sense, really, the implementer is the right term. Uh, you may have clients who have coaches that help them in, in other areas and, and that they have those key team members. Uh, heck, you might even be the person that helps get them hooked up with the right coach or the right uh, uh, associate. Am I hearing that correctly? Absolutely. There is a lot of coaching that I do, but the coaching is going to be very specific to the tools that we train on with an EOS. We have 20 plus tools that uh, to implement and execute with. Uh, so there's a lot of coaching to be done over the course of an implementation. And through that, we have conversations consistently with the leadership team about the challenges that they are having. And to be a resource, for me to be a resource to solutions and the people that they need for those challenges, that's really important to me as well. And the additional coaching that, that they will need, I love to be able to refer that out and help them find the right match for it. Because that goes beyond what we do with the EOS tools. And I want them to have the right ecosystem around them. So there's a lot of different programs and resources available to entrepreneurs. What makes EOS different and better than some of the others? Is it the tools? Is it the process? What, what would you say is really kind of the special sauce? Uh, the combination of this, uh, you know, there are well over 100,000 companies that are running on EOS working with an implementer. There are many, many others that are self-implementing, right? This has been around for a long time. And uh, tried and true, of course, is, is beneficial, but most importantly, simplified. It is, I mentioned the complexity bias earlier. Yeah. So it is not in our nature to simplify what we do and to find the root cause of an issue. We'll sit and talk about an issue for hours with people, right? But how quickly can we get to the root cause? How quickly can we solve that? And then what are the actual steps you need to take next to eliminate the issue completely? The next one is coming, right? Um, so, you know, the practical nature of actual tools this isn't a, a theoretical program. We're not telling you um, why you should be doing things. They're happy to share that, but mostly we're focusing in on exactly how to do it and how to utilize your team so that it's happening every place it needs to. You know, every entrepreneur has a vision for where they want their company to go. We've got to make sure your whole leadership team is sharing that same vision. They've got real clarity on it. And then we've got accountability and discipline that we, we, we create throughout your whole organization. So that wherever that leadership team goes, they see people executing on that vision. And I think the actual execution of it, that's the magic. You know, you're talking about simplification. It just made me think. I, I started my consulting practice in 2005. So this is if my math, my grade school math is correct. It's been 18 years. And one of the things that I've learned, I think the most, it doesn't matter what industry it's in. It doesn't matter how large the business is. Uh, leaders, CEOs are still having trouble simplifying their personal life having life balance, being able to get home. I'll never forget. I, I actually coached someone. This was years ago. And I asked, what, you know, what metrics do you, how are we going to measure success? And he said, if I can get home earlier than I do, I have he had small children. And, and he said, I'm getting home like at seven. If I got home at, at five 30, I'd be thrilled. And, and we did that, but I mean, there's some disciplines and there's some strategy involved in that. Talk a little bit, before we go to break, talk a little bit about how you might be able to help implement strategies and, and disciplines to help CEOs have a life. 
<laughs> yes, uh, that's an excellent question, Dan. Uh, I'd love to say that I planted that one with you, but I didn't. Uh, we EOS, we we literally wrote the book on that. It's called the EOS Life. And, uh, you know, we've said for years, when you run a better business, you live a better life. Because if you're not running the business, it's running you. And the work that we do, the end result is to make sure that you're getting more of what you want from your business. And if what you want from your business is more freedom, we will figure that out. That will be part of the plan and how to get you there and work on executing on how to get you there. It's going to be different for everybody, but many people go into uh, starting a company because they want to control control their time. They want control of their calendar. It tends to be one of those key attributes for an entrepreneur. And the reality uh, hits hard that suddenly there's no control over that. It is possible. It is possible. It takes intention and it takes a team of great people. We work with you on getting the right people in the right seats because that's the only thing that's going to free you up so that you can have a life. Yeah. Well, you know, as we go to break, uh, Linda and I both have been mentored and coached by a guy named Alan Weiss. And Alan has often said uh, there are entrepreneurs and consultants who left a boss to go to a worse boss uh, mm -hmm. themselves. So that's <laughs> that's part of what we're talking about. Hey, listen, we're going to take another short break to hear from our sponsors. And when we come back with our guest, Stacey Lukensmeyer, for our Plead the Fifth section of the show, uh, we're going to have her spell out a few things about her past life. You're not going to want to miss this. Don't walk away. We'll be right back with more of the Shrimp Tank. And Plead the Fifth is brought to you by our corporate sponsors, Ideal Life 360, Cornerstone Financial, First Underwriters Insurance, BC Fitness Studio, and Upstart Group. Please visit our website at www.shrimptankpodcast.com slash Seattle to learn more about these terrific companies. Now back to the show. Okay. Welcome back to the Shrimp Tank, where we're interviewing the best and brightest CEOs and business thought leaders in the greater Puget Sound area and beyond. I'm co-host Linda Popke, and our guest today is Stacey Lukensmeyer, and our next segment is Plea the Fifth. Stacey, we're turning up the heat. We're turning up the heat. We're going to ask you some tougher questions. You can plead the fifth, but only once. And so uh, be, be cognizant of that. Again, you win absolutely nothing. And we may even have more fun with this one. Now, listen, speaking of fun, I was reading your LinkedIn. Uh, I was reading your LinkedIn profile and it had one of the funnest, coolest things I ever heard. It said that uh, you won the fourth grade spelling bee. Uh, I don't know what grade school that was at, uh, but it, you 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 were the fourth grade spelling bee champion. And I'm wondering, what was your toughest word to spell to win that fourth grade spelling bee championship? Okay, Dan, this is a really great story because <laughs> I, I won, but I should not have won because in reality, I didn't spell the word right. Oh, no. What? <laughs> I know. Right? Yeah. Well, okay. Yep. We got to so, hear this story. No one has ever asked me the true story here. Uh -huh. I rarely have to tell it. Um, the word was judge. That was the word on which I won. And I misspelled it. The My opponent misspelled it. And then the principal of the school allowed me to, to spell it again. And I, I, don't even think I got it right the third time. And I might, my, my, I was in, well, I was nine. Come on, right? Uh, but I'll, I'll never forget my teacher who told me afterwards and that I had still gotten it wrong. <laughs> and that I actually, it was hard to hear at the time, but I love that. I love that. I would have gone forward bragging about winning on this word when uh, so many other kids in that audience knew that I'd gotten it wrong. And it taught me some humility right out of the gate. Mm. Uh, but I love putting that in my bio because it makes people laugh. People connect with that. They remember a win in their childhood. Mine's just a little bit more complicated win. Well, we won't, we won't, ju <laughs> we won't judge you for that. Ooh. Thank you. Nice. Well played. <laughs> but notice she didn't go back in fifth grade. Somebody else went into fifth grade and was a spelling <laughs> champion. She said, I'm taking the win and leaving. 
<laughs> okay. So um, you talked about having six companies. So, and you, you know, you've had some, yeah, I love the way you said that you, you know, appreciate all your failures. You've learned from what, things that didn't go right. What advice would you give to, you know, not the nine-year-old Stacy, maybe the 18 or 20-year-old Stacy before all those companies happened? If you could go back and talk to her today, what would you tell her? Linda, you've asked a really deep question, you know, <laughs> um, just try it. I, it almost doesn't matter what it is, you know, um, we, we at 18, 20, we make so many plans for the future, right? And if somebody tells you, you know, it's never going to look like you think it's going to look, I think that's actually irrelevant advice. Uh, who cares? <laughs> There's no way you could possibly know what's coming next, right? Uh, but say yes to every opportunity that drops right in front of you and give it a shot. Give it everything you've got, whether it lands well or whether it lands poorly. Uh, you've grown and you never know what consecutive doors are going to open just because you said yes to opening this other one. That's been really valuable for me. All right, Stacy, uh, I am going to make you start your seventh business. Uh -huh. You've got to do it. You've got to do it based on a hobby. I want to know what the new business based on your hobby is. Dan, uh, the hardest thing for me to do is answer the what are your hobbies question. Uh, <laughs> So uh, I don't have any. Oh, come on. You've, you've got to have a hobby. You've got to. Oh, uh, I've all, I usually default and say, well, you know, my hobby is honestly working with other people to help them start businesses. <laughs> uh, so what do you I have do fun with? What do, tell, Stacey, what do you enjoy doing? Other than sleeping. I know you're committed to sleeping. I, I, I saw that, but you've got to have something else for life balance that you enjoy. Yeah. You know, sleeping is my superpower. I will tell you, I get the most out of that. It's not like I have to sleep uberly long, but I make sure it's the best ever. Um, I think that's you know, it. You're going to go into some sort of a sleep thing. You're going to create something where you can, you can literally take a 10 minute nap uh, and, and come out refreshed. I, I can see Stacy and sleep going in there. Well, maybe maybe if you help us learn how to make sleep a superpower. You have right. other people. There you go. Sleep coaching. Maybe that's it. Dan. There you go. You <laughs> put everybody to sleep and you're sleep. earning money. How 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 right. hard can that be then? <laughs> Brilliant. Love it. Okay. All right. I'm going to ask you something different now. If you could have dinner with anyone, dead or alive, a couple of people around a dinner table, who would it be? And what are you going to ask them? Uh, yeah. You know, my husband and I actually talk about this one a lot, and uh, we come, we've come up with some really brilliant names over the past, and uh, I can tell you they're all escaping me right now. We had the best one two weeks ago. Wow, I'd really love to sit down with that person. Uh, you know, I, an actor, Bill Nye, British mm -hmm. uh, actor, I would love to sit down and include him at at the dinner table, absolutely. Uh, he's just played some really fascinating characters in a, in a different way. And it is in so many ways, completely opposite, I think, of who, uh, who I am and how I live my life. And I wanna know a little bit more about uh, how he approaches the world in that. Um, you know, you can always pick a historical figure. Uh, Nelson Mandela, not because many people would name him, but because, uh, he had a really complicated past and did a, a complete turnaround with that and ultimately changed the world. Love to spend time learning about that and hearing from the deeper recesses of his heart in that. I want the human story, the real one. Yeah, from him. All right, so probably in what looks like probably our last question, I want the real story from you on, on, on the last plead the fifth here, Stacy of the businesses you've owned, which one was the hardest and which was the most fun? Okay, so the hardest was the one that I ultimately closed, failed miserably at, and uh, that was a sports nutrition supply company, online sales. 
And it was kind of early on when that started. And as far as running a business, it was smooth. It was easy. How is this a problem? You know, create a great website, drive traffic. Um, it was successful, but it was boring as all get out. <laughs> and, uh, I did not know when I went into it that shipping and receiving was really all that it was. And uh, that was not feeding my soul. Um, and ultimately was going to be a disaster. And so uh, I, my business attorney had wanted to buy it from me. I should have sold it to him, but I didn't. So I ended up closing that one down um, a little painfully, but it was the right decision. The, the most fun, gosh, that's, that's hard. I honestly, three of the six are uh, in the running, in the top running. But I will tell you the commonality between those three and in all of those, I was working directly with business people on improving things in their company and helping them make those long-term decisions. So I think that's probably more telling than exactly what business it was. Just working with other entrepreneurs, love it. That's fantastic. Well, Stacy, this has been wonderful. Thank you so much for being our guest here on the Shrimp Tank. For listeners that want to get in touch with you, learn more about you, learn more about EOS, where do they go to get more information? You know, I am the only Stacey Lukensmeyer in the entire world. <laughs> <laughs> For better or worse, just Google me. You know, uh, my last name has a C in it. It starts with luck, L-U-C-K. And once you put that in, you'll probably see my LinkedIn profile on top. Send me a message through that. Uh, love to connect and learn a little bit more about who the people are in your audience out there in the world. That's fantastic. Coming from the only Linda Popke in the world. I appreciate that. <laughs> okay. So to everyone, make sure you check out all of the replays on shrimptankpodcast.com slash Seattle. I can't even talk. And wherever you get your podcasts, such as iHeart, Apple, Google, Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud, because damn, we are we are ubiquitous. I mean, it's hard for you to even spit them all out. I can't even get them all out there today. And make sure you follow us on our show's social media pages on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Well, Linda, first of all, it's great to have you back. I hope that you are, your knee continues to improve. We'll see you next month. Stacy. Great to have you. I'm looking forward to seeing you uh, soon in Rotary. We've got you invited into that and uh, hopefully you'll be joining us there soon. Uh, but thank you. It was a, a wonderful talking to you and learning so much about what you're doing. Uh, everybody, uh, do exactly what Linda said. The only Linda Popke in the world, do what she said. And uh, like us on Facebook because that's where we live stream every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Pacific. Our next show will be Wednesday, May 17th. Our guest is a friend of mine named Kurt Meyer. And he's actually, we talked about franchising for a second. He's going to talk about franchising and uh, veterans who are coming out of the military and opportunities that they have. Uh, my co-host for that show will be Monica Blackwood. In the meantime, be safe, be well, and be prosperous. Because until next week, the shrimp is back in the tank. So long. I've been feeling like a shark in a shrimp tank. Big fish, small pond in the shrimp.